immigration. Yes, the UKIP candidate in the Rochester by-election, Mark Reckless, was jeered at a public meeting last night after he was asked what would happen to those EU migrants currently living here if we were to leave the EU. Let's listen to the exchange. What would happen, Mark Reckless, if we left the European Union? Uh, what would happen to, for instance, the Polish plumber who lives in Rochester? Uh, would he be able to stay? Would he have to go back? Well, I think in the, the near term, we'd have to have a transitional period. And I think we should probably allow people who are currently here to have a, a work permit, at least for a, a fixed period. Forgive me, if there's a Polish plumber who, for instance, has got a house, got a family, got kids at the local school, are you going to deport him and his family? I, I think people who've been here a long time would integrate in that way. I think we'd want to, to look sympathetically at. But what we would want to do is new people coming in. <laughs> what, does that mean? what we would like to do we is new people. Are we going to say that they need to go back as well? Yeah, Mark Hansen. What, what, what we would want to do is to look at new people coming in and apply a consistent Australian-style point system and the same to people com coming from Europe as we do to those coming from, say, the Commonwealth, from Australia, um, Africa, India, the Caribbean. We shouldn't have a discriminatory system which favours Europeans against people from outside. Well, Mr Reckless has come under fire, with some claiming that he was suggesting that EU nationals currently living here might have to return home if we leave the EU. He since clarified his comments, and here's what he told the BBC this morning. Well, anyone who's here legally uh, under current EU uh, arrangements, we would, we, we would want to uh, ensure that, that, that they remained legally by issuing a, a work permit to anyone who is in that category already in the country. For, for new people coming in, we'd apply a, a points-based system. Well, let's just get some further clarification on this. Uh, UKIP spokesman on migration, Stephen Wolfe, uh, he joins us now from Brussels. Mr Wolfe, welcome to the Daily Politics. Can Morning, you just Andrew. clarify what would the status of EU citizens living in this country, what would their status be if we left the EU? Absolutely clear, as Mark was saying in the statement you just heard. Anyone who has the legal right to live, work or study in the United Kingdom would remain to have that legal right to stay in the United Kingdom after we left the European Union and we'd introduced our points-based system. So Anybody who is an illegal person... Sorry. No, let's ahead. just stick with the legal. Illegal is a different matter. Let's stick with legal. So anybody from the European Union who is currently here legally, whether it's to work or to study or just to live here, they would all automatically qualify to stay here? Yes, under our pr proposals, and that's the statement I made in my Doncaster conference speech, that would be the case. But can I, I clarify here the position of transitional, which is what people seem to have got aerated about. When we're talking about the transitional period, this is under Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. What would happen there is the European Union would want to have negotiations with us, and we've heard this many times, they would say those British citizens living in other European countries, oh, you'd have to send them back, and what would the position be? Where we're saying is we would argue that those who live in European countries and those who are Europeans living in Britain should be looked favourably to stay in the countries that they are. That is our position. We cannot obviously uh, take the position of the European Union if they say they want to have people deported. That right. is not the uh, way that we would look at things. I understand, but for clarification, I'd just like to take this step by step. Would it be the case that EU citizens who are currently working here, would they, if we left the EU, would they have to apply for a work permit? If they left the EU and decided to go and work in a different country like the United States or no, China no, or Australia? No, 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 let me, no, no. Let me ask the question again. EU citizens okay. already based here, who are working here, if we left the EU, would they have to apply for a work permit to stay? No, they wouldn't have to apply for a work permit to stay. We, I've just made that absolutely clear. Those who have a legal right to be here. But what we would have to deal with, unfortunately, is what would happen with the negotiations with Europe. How would they want to treat the status of those people living here? And that may well be, as we've heard many times, a suggestion that there should be some sort of permit, some visa system. We would, would not want that to have uh, be, be in place. We would rather have a much cleaner, clearer system. But the negotiations may, not, may force our hand into other, other routes. What about uh, those EU citizens who live here but are not working? Would they be allowed to continue to live here? Well, that's a much more difficult position. You've already seen the court cases in Germany that, that suggest 
that those who are not working in the European country should not have the, technically the right to be able to claim benefits. So we would have to consider that situation. We would, we would want them to be involved and working in the United Kingdom. What we can't allow people is to have the benefit system. And we have actually said that those who come to the country and, uh, and want to work here, that's perfectly acceptable, but you can't right. claim benefits for five years. But the German court case was not about deporting the woman. It was, a, it was about the woman uh, uh, not looking for work but still trying to claim jobless benefits. I didn't ask about that. I simply said EU citizens who are here, who are not working, would they be able to stay? Well, there's lots of circumstances there, Andrew, as you know. For example, ah. you might have somebody who is working and, uh, well, let's just take this step by step as you're suggesting. For example, what about someone who is working here, contributing to society, paying their tax and is married and his wife isn't working? We're certainly not going to deport his wife for doing that. So you've got to recognise there is a humanity element in this. And so we're not going to be there sitting out saying, oh, we're going to deport this Tom, Dick or Harry to do so. It's not going to happen. We will have a situation where those who are living and working here have the opportunity. Those who are on benefits may be on benefits for different reasons. They may be sick, they may be ill, they may be married. We'll have to look at those circumstances, but the intention, just look at the intention, the intention is not to change things for those who are currently living here. And what would be the basis of people coming in after if we, ha if we left the EU, what would be the basis of anybody coming in here? Because those countries that have associate status, for example, Switzerland, uh, are pretty much have to have the same immigration rules as members of the EU. Well, we would not necessarily have to go down that line. It's, I think it's absolutely clear that once we're a sovereign nation once more with full independent rights to be able to control our own immigration system and borders, that we can then hopefully have a much more ethical system where everybody is treated equally across the globe. I think it's really uh, unfair sometimes on the system that we have where Chi Chinese professors or people from India have to have a visa system applied or get restricted in the numbers sure. that we have such but, as the 50,000 a year. So that's, that's where we would go for, Andrew. I, I understand that. But if you want some kind of associate status outside the EU, as Switzerland and Norway have at the moment, part of the price the EU wants is essentially open borders. There's a higher proportion of immigrants in the Swiss workforce than there is in the British workforce. Uh, so if you don't agree to that, there could be serious restrictions on British ability to move to the EU, correct? Well, I, uh, that's exactly what I argued at the beginning when we said about the transitional periods. We would hope that the European Union would be sensible and actually calm about the position of those who live in the country already from, from Britain and that we would therefore be able to have the equal status with those who are Europeans living in the UK. I don't want to get into some sort of bidding war with the European Union about who's a good citizen, who's a not, not a good citizen. I would want us to have to be sensible and say, let's leave it as it is, the status quo, and then we look at the independence of the UK, which we want to have an open system to the whole world, and hopefully the European Union would see okay. that sense. But again, so, the European Union has often not seen sense, and I, I recognize that there could be difficulties in negotiations, as you're, you're highlighting. So why then, given that you're saying this morning, I, I can't really see any circumstances where you're saying that an existing EU citizen in this country would be deported or forced to leave Britain, except in extremis, uh, why was Mark Reckless then implying that there would be discretion, that they would look at cases favorably, which also implies you'd look at others unfavorably? Why, why did he seem to imply that it wasn't going to be an automatic uh, right to remain in this country? No, he didn't imply it was going to be an automatic right to be deported. No, that's my leave, point. That's uh, what you're uh, implying. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't, no, he wasn't suggesting that those who live here would automatically leave. What he was talking about is the looking favorably in terms of the transitional period, the negotiating element. That is part of the brief that I've put out there, and knowing full well that the European Union may not want to negotiate favorably. Our view is that we want to have people here looking at and look at that situation more favorably than maybe the EU. But, and so but, that is part of the four stages of the right. policy. Ille but hold, legal hold legal people can stay, illegal people can go, points-based system and that we would argue for favorable status during the negotiation period with the European Union. Just one final question, Mr. Wolf, because I'm not quite sure what you're saying here. Yeah. If these negotiations don't go well, if you can't come to an agreement with the European Union uh, about Britain's status outside of the European Union, is that when EU citizens living here will be in some trouble? No.
because we will then turn around and embarrass the European Union for being childish and, and nonsensical. We will still seek to have those in the European Union who are here, living here, working here, contributing to society, able to stay here. That is right. the issue. We do not want deportation. I am not going to go down the line of saying that the European Union should be uh, less favourable. We want them to be as favourable right. to people as possible because, after all, we're dealing with human beings, Andrew. No, I, I, I do understand that. Uh, that's what we usually do in this programme, <laughs> except when it's the parliamentary dog yes. of the year competition. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Wolf, for clarifying <laughs> that. I hope My pleasure. That, uh, uh, I hope that Mark Reckless was listening. You may want to just listen to uh, what the uh, politicians here are going to, to say.